Hi class, welcome back to Baking School. We are currently on lesson eight of the Baking Fundamentals course, and today I am answering the questions, what is gluten, why does gluten matter in baking, and how do we control gluten development? Now this is a bit of a continuation from lesson seven where we talked all about flour's role in baking. So if you haven't watched that lesson yet, make sure you don't skip it because these two are very closely related. Now let's go ahead and dive in. So first things first, let's talk about what gluten is. Now the grains, wheat, barley, and rye all contain two proteins called glutenin and gliadin. Now when these proteins are hydrated, they begin bonding together, forming an elastic network called gluten. Now this elastic network is really what gives structure to our baked goods. So when doughs or batters are baked, that elastic network expands in the oven containing all of the gases that are leavening our baked goods. Now if you remember from the last lesson about flour, certain flours contain low levels of protein like cake flour, and this would produce a very weak gluten structure. While other flours like bread flour contain much higher protein content, which creates a very strong gluten structure. So I actually have three simple doughs here, all made with just flour and water. The first is made with cake flour, the second is made with bread flour, and the third is made with whole wheat flour. Now each of these doughs has varying levels of gluten structure in them. Now you can't actually see the gluten structure, but what you can do is actually wash each of these dough balls under water. And this will wash away all of the starch and leave you with pure gluten. Okay, so now that all of the starch has been washed away out of the dough, you're left with pure gluten. Now you can really see the difference between the cake flour and the bread flour. The cake flour almost disintegrated completely. I was left with almost no gluten at all. And this gluten structure is much weaker. You can see when you pull this apart, the gluten structure is very weak and that is because of the heavy bleaching that is done to the cake flour. So not only is it a lower um, amount of gluten, but it's weaker. On the bread flour, I was left with the most amount of gluten. If you look, when I pull this apart, it's a very elastic, very strong, and that's because of the high protein content in the bread flour. Now in contrast, the wheat flour, the whole wheat flour, which has a similar amount of protein as the bread flour, I was left with a fair amount of gluten, but you can see as you pull it apart that there is the bran and the germ mixed in throughout that gluten structure, so it's actually weakening the gluten structure. It's not quite as elastic as the bread flour. Okay, so now that you've seen how different flours create varying gluten structures, Let's talk about how gluten is actually formed. So moisture is key for gluten formation. When the proteins in flour are hydrated, that's when they can begin aligning to form those gluten structures. This cannot happen without moisture. And while water is the key ingredient for gluten production, there are a few other common baking ingredients that also affect the way gluten is formed. So fat is an ingredient in baking that actually works to inhibit gluten production. When fat and flour are mixed together, it actually coats the proteins, serving as a barrier between the moisture and those proteins. But it actually also shortens gluten strands. So if you're familiar with that white vegetable fat called shortening, that is actually where the name came from because fat shortens gluten strands. Now sugar is also a key ingredient that inhibits gluten production. If you remember from our lesson on sugar's role in baking, sugar is hygroscopic in nature, which means it pulls in and holds on to moisture. Now because moisture is a key ingredient in gluten production, and sugar is holding on to a lot of that moisture, it leaves less readily available for the flour to produce gluten with. Now in contrast to fat and sugar, salt is actually an ingredient that promotes gluten production. So salt actually interacts with the proteins in flour to strengthen the gluten structure and allow it to build a more elastic network. So you may notice that yeast bread recipes typically have a fair amount of salt in them. And while this purpose is to flavor the bread, that salt does also strengthen the gluten structure. 
So not only are the other ingredients in a recipe extremely important for the way gluten is developed, but also the mixing methods are important for the way gluten is either developed or controlled in a recipe. When you think about something like a biscuit recipe, where you cut fat into the flour first, you can really see how that fat is serving to create a barrier in the flour before you're going to add the liquid. Now then when the liquid is added, a biscuit recipe will encourage you to work the dough as little as possible. Now you can really see how this mixing method is working to limit the amount of gluten production to keep a really light and tender biscuit. Now in contrast, when you think about a yeast bread recipe where you are going to knead the dough for a long period of time, that kneading process is working to strengthen and promote the gluten network. So now that you understand all of these different things about gluten, you can really see why mixing methods are written the way that they are to either help promote or inhibit gluten formation. So that is it for the video portion of this lesson, but as always, I would like to encourage you to not skip the written lesson because I always leave a lot more detail there. So now I'd love to give you your homework assignment. I want you to try a mixing method that's either completely new to you or one that you're not quite comfortable with yet. I'll leave some links in the description of some different mixing methods and recipes that might be good for you to try. Now some of these mixing methods are designed to inhibit gluten formation, while others are designed to promote gluten formation. As you're making this recipe, really pay attention to the ingredients and the method and how it is working to develop the gluten in the recipe. All right, I'll see you guys next time, bye.